This video is brought to you by BTI Institute, a New Jersey leader in certification-based management training. On the presentation, it says the Agile Training and Certification and Conversation Starter. Is, uh, Nitin, is that, I guess, Nitin, if you can uh, indicate yep. that that's okay, everybody can see it. Uh, so yep. again, this was, thank you. Uh, this was shared during the January LCI meeting. Uh, the original plan was Nitin and I were going to present it to, together, but unfortunately Nitin was not able to make it uh, to that meeting due to some uh, issues that he had, some personal issues that he had to deal with. Uh, so now what you're going to get is you're going to get the same presentation, but you're going to have Nitin adding his parts of it. So hopefully if, you're, if this is a repeat for you, you will definitely pick up some more information. And the other thing I wanted to point out is uh, we're, we're doing this as a pilot. So what we're what we're doing is we tried Zoom last month and we're trying WebEx and we're using the PMI New Jersey chapter WebEx license. And you probably see like this guy talking's name is Harry, but no, my name is Bob Phillips. So I'm gonna put this up to remind you that yes, this is Bob, I'm not Harry. So uh, let's get started. All right, so basically we wanna take everybody through uh, certifications. Unfortunately in the Agile space, there's an awful lot of them. Uh, it's, you know, there's a, there's a big, Joke in the industry saying, you know, you have the alphabet soup of uh, certification because there's so many different types. And so what Nitin and I want to do tonight is basically just focus on what we consider the majors. Uh, again, this is Nitin in my opinion, so it doesn't mean that, you know, it's, it's, it's in concrete. But it, it's, what we want to do is leave you with some guidance as far as uh, where, you know, where certifications are going and what you might want to pursue if you're interested. So we're going to talk a little bit about Scrum Alliance, and then Nitin's going to talk about Scrum Org, and then I'm going to share uh, what the PMI roadmap, you know, with that whole ACP certification, and then we're going to do some comparisons between the Scrum Master and the Product Owner uh, certification. Then I'm going to share my personal journey, and then Nitin's going to share his, and then we're going to leave it open. And what I'd like to try to do is after each session, we'll stop and we'll allow the, the community out here to actually uh, ask questions and then we can have some discussion. And we're gonna keep this meeting time box to end at seven o'clock. And at seven o'clock, Nitin and I will stay on for another 15 minutes if there's, and we'll, we're gonna turn the recording off. And if, if there's anybody that has any questions that they wanna go dive a little bit deeper, uh, you know, we'll, Nitin and I will be here to do that. So with, with that, we'll get started. So basically, one of the questions that, you know, people ask is what's the right Agile certification for me? So. Uh, it, the answer to that is it really it, it really depends. It, it depends on you know where you're working and what you're trying to accomplish. And then basically, if you're trying to break into the agile world, let me try to move this stuff so it's not blocking everything. Uh, you might want to start with a CSM or PSM. Uh, CSM stands for Certified Scrum Master. PSM stands for Professional Scrum Master. We're going to get into more details about that. But if, if you've been in the industry, you've probably noticed a lot of job descriptions. Everybody's looking for a CSM. Uh, Scrum Alliance pretty much got their foot, I guess, in, in the, on the ground first. And that seems to be the most popular certification out there. And that's the Certified Scrum Master. Okay, then basically, if you want to learn more about Agile, not just Scrum, you could then choose something like the PMI ACP, and that's from comes from the Project Management Institute. ACP, ACP stands for Agile Certified Practitioner. And then it, if you're supposed to work on a large project and maybe your organization is using SAFE, maybe then go for the SAFE Agilist. But if you're just looking to get certified right now, you, you, know, you might want to wait to see actually what kind of projects you're going to be working on before you start even thinking about scaling or going with SAFE. And then basically, once you start getting more and more experience, then you start going for the coaching certification. And I'm going to share, you know, that, that's pretty much the path that I followed. I started as a, as, as a project manager who became Scrum Master, and now I'm an Agile coach. And it's basically, it's a really fun uh, journey that you can actually go through. And then basically, uh, through the Scrum Alliance, they have this thing called the CSP, Certified Scrum Professional. Uh, that's the uh, ultimate as far as a Scrum Master type of certification from the Scrum, Scrum Alliance, because you're actually showing that you have a lot of education and you're, and basically that you have experience. Because in order to get the CSP, you have to demonstrate that you've actually worked with Scrum teams. You didn't just go to a two-day class and take a test. And so, okay, I guess we're done. I think I think we ended a little bit early.
Well, yeah, Bob, we're not I think we should go home. <laughs> okay. Uh, so there's actually a lot more behind this, but th this is pretty much the kinds of topics that we're going to be talking about tonight. All right. So now, uh, this is these are the certifications in the Scrum Alliance. And anybody on the phone, uh, please let me know if you're having trouble hearing me or if I'm talking too fast. I am from New Jersey. Uh, but anyway, so the Scrum Alliance, like I mentioned earlier, they have the CSM. These on the left hand side are all base certifications. You have the CSM standing for Certified Scrum Master, the CSPO, the Certified uh, Certified Scrum Product Owner, and the CSD, uh, Certified Scrum Developer. And then since I've actually became certified, they added these A certifications in the middle, meaning A for advanced. Uh, that means you've been working as a Scrum Master for over a year. Now, if I was an employee looking for a Scrum Master, I would be looking for ACSMs because I really don't want somebody that just took their Scrum Master test because really they're going to be learning on my on my nickel. So I'd want somebody that's actually worked with Scrum Team. So that's I think that's the reason why they put that out there. And then from there, you would go to your certified Scrum Professional, and then they've actually differentiated it dash Scrum Master or dash Product Owner. So as you can see, uh, the certifications are very similar as far as the path that you follow, and it's really just a matter of where you want to uh, put your experience. Like if you work a lot with the business and you like working with business analysts and you like uh, working with customers to get requirements, you know, maybe the product owner certification might be, might be for you. If you're a typical project manager slash program manager and you want to start working with scrum teams, maybe the CSM certification might be good for you. And then basically the, the bottom one that I really didn't talk about much, that's basically a certified scrum developer. Uh, Nitin probably can go into a little bit of detail about that, but as far as me, this again, Bob's opinion, uh, you I think you'd be much better off focusing on the certified Scrum Master. Uh, basically, because as a CSD, you're actually basically just saying that you're a developer working on a development team on a, on a Scrum project. And when I worked at Teach for America, what they did was everybody in the entire organization, all the all the developers, all the project managers, all the program managers, everybody got their CSM. They actually brought uh, trainers in. Uh, Michael James, he's he's actually one of Nitin's uh, trainers. He actually came to New York and conducted training for everybody in the Teach for America organization. And there were 300 people on the IT team, so it was a big investment. And the way Teach for America worked it out was. They gave Michael James training space, and, my, and then Teach for America was allowed to invite attendees for free. So basically, all Teach for America was doing was providing food and a training space, and then and, and Michael was allowed to invite attendees from the outside that were paying money. So that, that's a way to get around it if you don't really have the budget to actually bring uh, in-house training. Then you, you, know, you have to find a really good uh, trainer as well. But that's just something to think about. Uh, Nitin, was there anything you want to touch on this slide? Uh, very quickly, Bob, the ACSM was just announced around April of 2018. So no, it's relatively new in case you're looking for some, hey, we need five years of ACSM. That won't happen. And yeah, well summarized, they are professional um, trainers like Michael James are really great and outstanding. They can do a lot for the organization. All right, now I'll leave, now I'll leave it open for the community. Is there any questions that you might have before we move on? Yeah, this is Henry Will. I got a question. Like, if we wanted to take training on our own, not part of an organization, uh, where could we find a list of organizations that offer these types of training? Uh, you you could go to the Scrum Alliance or the Scrum.org website, and they they actually do advertise you know the types of training that is available uh, for the different. Uh, certifications that are out there. So you, uh, a lot of Google searches you could do. You could do uh, CSM training New York City or CSM training uh, New Jersey, and then you'll get a list. But you probably want to start with the Scrum Alliance or the Scrum.org site. And we're going to get into that a little bit. You know, I, I've been talking right now about Scrum Alliance only. So Bob, this, this is Lori. Uh, Bob is, did you say Michael James is actually one of the professional trainers at Scrum Alliance? Uh, yes, and I've actually I was I had my CSM already, and I was fortunate to be working for Teach for America, and, and Michael James was teaching, 
and Teacher America let me go to one of his CSM classes. Uh, he, you know, it, and it's really interesting because depending, because the way uh, the Scrum Alliance works is they make it up to the Scrum trainer to come up with their own training materials. So any training you get from the Scrum Alliance would be different. Not like if you went to a scrum.org class where everybody works off the same package of slots where each uh, certified Scrum trainer, like people like Michael James, they actually have their own deck. And it's, it's really interesting. Okay. Yeah, and if I could just supplement on that, there's a reason for that. And there are somewhat um, different philosophies Scrum Alliance will still hit certain learning objectives that all of the certified Scrum trainers have to get to in class. Um, in Scrum.org, uh, again, just for consistency, the training material is the same. But everyone's got a different style in presenting and holding the class. But again, the two major certifying bodies, and we're a little ahead in comparison with Scrum Alliance and Scrum.org. Yeah. All right. So. Uh, I'll move on, and uh, again, if, if there's any questions, please just say, hey, Bob, or, or hey, Nitin, what, what about this? All right, now, uh, the previous slide showed the CSP, all right? This is pre pretty much a certification that I received from the SCORM Alliance, and I was really proud of it. Uh, after I got it, they broke it down to the CSP-SM and the CSP-PO, depending if you were certified as a product owner or a scrum master. I kind of got grandfathered in, so I'm a CSP both of both of them uh, because I had my CSPO and my, my CSM as well. Uh, but then from there, there's other uh, certifications you can go after. Uh, this is the ultimate one. This is probably one of the hardest ones to get from the Scrum Alliance. This is the CST. This would be the Michael James. You're actually certified to train other Scrum Masters. Uh, that is like the most ultimate, and that's probably why it's, of all the colors, it's, it's silver. Uh, but it's, it probably should be gold on this page. Uh, it's really, it allows them to actually conduct the class, charge people money, and then it gives, then he's the only person or she would be the only person that will allow you to take the test. Uh, other certifications that they've recently come out with is the certified enterprise coach and the certified team coach. This is where the Scrum Alliance is beginning to recognize that there's more to, to Scrum than just having like a Scrum Master. Uh, you need coaches that are involved. And these basically certifications touch on the different degrees of coaching, where does somebody, you know, coach teams or does somebody actually coach a whole organization? Uh, to me, the team coach would be working in this space of, of working like in programs, maybe touching on a portfolio. And then basically uh, the enterprise coach would be looking at tying the different portfolios together and, you know, looking at it for the whole enterprise. So it's basically, it's, a, it's different levels of expertise. Yep, Bob, and if I could supplement a little bit, um, the Scrum Alliance earlier just had what the CSC, or Certified Scrum Coach designation to a few years ago. And so if you're looking at some job boards or recruiters, they're still using that older, outdated one, and they haven't kept up with the industry. Um, and that was split into the CEC and the CTC. Both of these are not knowledge-based assessments or exams, so you can't go in and say, hey, let me go get my CTC and take a test for it. It doesn't work that way. Uh, it's an application that is evaluated by some peers. It could be audited. It could be uh, leading to some interviews and questions. So just know that all of these, including the CST, uh, it's not uh, a knowledge-based exam. Right. And one other contrast, the scrum.org organization does not have any designations for formal coaching. Um, it's, it's not a void or a gap. There are other organizations that do that. I think all professional trainers act as coaches and to some capacity. But in terms of formal certifications, um, scrum.org doesn't offer uh, the equivalent of a CEC or CTC as of today. Yep, and the way things are going, who knows what's, what's going to be tomorrow. All right, uh, so with this, I'm going to turn it over to Nitin, because Nitin has been, he's basically, if you've ever looked at Nitin's credentials, he's, he's definitely the alphabet soup. He's got both the C, uh, Scrum Alliance and Scrum.org. Bob, personally, I've decided just to focus on Scrum, Scrum Alliance. Actually, 
BNY Mellon had me go through a PSM class, but I kind of refused to take the exam because I just didn't want to add. I didn't want to have to have more of those acronyms. I, th I, th I felt just having stuff on the Scrum Alliance side wasn't enough. So go ahead with Nitin. Thanks, Bob. So we are now going to look at Scrum.org that has uh, the backing of Ken Schwaber, one of the signatories of the Agile Manifesto. Scrum.org came a couple of years after the Scrum Alliance. So know that some of these certificates might be um, a little behind, and there's a logistical reason for it. Uh, a quick thing, uh, typically the starting alphabet is letter P for professional under Scrum.org, and for the Scrum Alliance is C for certified. Uh, Scrum.org over the years has said, hey, uh, how deep can we go with Scrum? And that's really the core Scrum and looking at the Scrum Guide. And that's where you have the different levels. You have the foundation at level one, intermediate level two, and then advanced at level three. Um, the one benefit for these, should people be tight on budget or may not see classes, you can take this online uh, on your own, multiple choice, 85% pass rate for level one. And then you could ladder up or look at other, if you're interested, the level twos and level threes. Uh, I personally have a lot of respect for people who've got um, either level two or level three, because uh, it really gets into scenario-based uh, situations, and uh, the assessments that they offer are very credible and really, really tough. So that's on the Scrum Master level. Um, they do offer some more, but let me just pause again very quickly. Any questions right here on uh, uh, the PSMs. Okay, so Nathan, how, how does the different levels uh, map up, match up with the CSM? So both the CSM and the PSM level one are considered, let's say, intro level certifications. Um, if you want to go deeper, then I would go to a, a level two or a level three. Uh, and those are for, let's say, Scrum Masters really looking for a challenge, looking at different scenarios, maybe even beyond the immediate teams, and really getting to the core of Scrum. And then maybe, like, a CSM might be equivalent to a PSM2, and a CSP may be equivalent to a PSM3, possibly. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they've ever possibly. published that, but it's logical. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of people um, make those comparisons, although um, I have both of them. Um, but the PSM3 is really, really rigorous, uh, just to let you know. So uh, just keep that in mind. If you have somebody, if you're looking for a really good Scrum Master and has got a PSM3, um, it, that person's got a solid credential and good background. If that's all you're looking for, if someone in HR doesn't know a lot about agility or Scrum, and you say, hey, I need at least a level two or level three, and you find such a person, uh, they're worth interviewing, at least having a conversation with. Uh, not to say that CSMs, the ACSMs or CSPs are not, but even with the CSPs, Certified Scrum Professionals, some of them will be on the Scrum Master side, Product Owner side. It's still worth the conversation, but if, I'm, if I find someone with a level three PSM, uh, I certainly want to have a conversation with them. Okay, no more questions. Let's move on to the next one. Um, continuing to scrum.org, again, the letter P stands out. Uh, they do have something for product owner, and again, they have level one and level two. Um, they do have something called professional scrum as a leadership or PAL one. They have a scale professional scrum or the Nexus as it was known earlier, SBS. They do have something for developers. And most recently, just a couple of months ago, they came up with uh, the PSK Level 1. Um, a, a lot of people are giving feedback on this. It's starting to pick up a little bit of momentum. So just to contrast quickly, um, there isn't a, a PSK uh, with the Scrum Alliance. This is something new. Scrum Alliance also doesn't have its own um, scaling flavor. 
they do lean on some other institutions and um, techniques such as LESS through Craig Larman and Bus and um, uh, Scrum at Scale through Scrum Inc. backed by Jeff Sutherland. So again, the, the PSPO, if you're really into product management, working with the business, the product, um, that's what I'd be looking for, level twos. And then there's some others just to think about. Any questions here? All right, so uh, now we've talked about the main certification. And like Nitin mentioned, uh, the, uh, a real latecomer, like, you know, Scrum, Scrum Alliance was first, then Scrum.org came, and then PMI came out with this certification called the ACP. And I, I have the ACP, and I really think uh, industry hasn't caught up to it yet because I think it really shows a lot more experience than somebody with a CSM or a PSM uh, certification. Uh, because if you look at, at what it requires, it requires uh, 3,500 hours of working experience that you actually have to document. You know, it's not quite as difficult as a PMP is, but it, you still have to go through that proctored exam process. And it's, you know, it, it's also backed by PMI. So uh, it's something that's, that's, that's definitely going to uh, get big and it, it's just going to probably get harder and harder to pass it, just like the PMP. Like, I don't know if you guys were lucky enough to see John Zay's uh, presentation at the monthly meeting on Tuesday where he, he showed you the evolution of the PM Bach. You know, it went from 185 pages to close to 800 or so. And it, it's what I would envision is the same thing is going to happen uh, with the ACP. So if, if it's something that you're thinking about, you're probably better off doing it rather than waiting. That, again, this is just Bob's opinion. I have no inside uh, knowledge about it. And basically, it 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 shows that you have knowledge of Agile overall, not just Scrum, which which the Scrum.org and the Scrum Alliance certifications provide. So you, you're actually showing that you're more rounded. I, you know, again, Bob's opinion. Uh, Nitin, did you have anything you want to add to that? Yeah, so uh, agree. And just to supplement, uh, the ACP came much later. So it's still going to take some time to pick up and it is a little bit more rigorous. It is proctored. Um, PMI actually eased up on some of its requirements a couple of years ago, uh, just to get, uh, I, I, I believe, more people attracted to it. Um, also, just a quick hit tour comparison, a certified Scrum professional through the Scrum Alliance many years ago, I think around 2012 or 13, it was still proctored till then. So when I took it, I actually had to go in and it did ask me about other flavors of agility, such as Lean, Kanban, XP. Um, so for a lot of practitioners, it is expected at that level to be more familiar with um, anything beyond Scrum. And fortunately, because the acronyms, you know, Certified Scrum Professional, that people thought, hey, that's just Scrum, but know if people at you know, earlier days took the CSV when it was proctored. They probably have a lot of things with other flavors as well. So just throwing that out there for, for consideration. And yeah, uh, the ACP isn't as, as tough as the PMP uh, and proctored, but uh, we'll, we'll pick up. We'll see how it goes. You never know in the future. And plus, if you have your PMP, one big thing is you, you, you're waving the 2,000 hours. So really you just have to show 1500 hours on agile projects so PMPs out there uh, definitely something you might want to keep in mind all right now uh, now we're going to do a little bit of comparisons we've been pretty much talking talking about them um, and so and then we have to figure out a way to show these boxes up on the slide too at the same time I, I feel like I'm moving your head around too much all right anyway uh, what, what this is is three columns. It's showing the, the CSM, the PSM1, and the PSM2 and 3. And basically, uh, what Nitin alluded to was uh, for the PSM, you don't have to go to formal training. You could pay $150 and take a test. Uh, and basically, don't expect 
that you're going to go into it and pass it without studying. You know, it's, it's definitely these tests are not easier. And as the number increases, the one to the two to the three, the test gets harder and harder, and so does the time. And what you have to do is you have to be able to pass uh, with an 85% score. Now, when you do the CSM exam, uh, you have to pay for a two-day class. A lot of instructors will uh, make them for three days. And so uh, it's going to be about 1,200, depending, maybe it might even be 1,500. Uh, but once you take the test, once you take the class and you actually pay attention during the class, uh, it's, it's pretty much, you know, you've got to pass the exam. It's, 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 you know, as long as you're, you went to class and you're actually paying attention and not doing your email and your, your texting and all that kind of stuff, you're, you're probably going to pass that. Uh, the other drawback on the CSN side is you have to, there's renewal fees every two years. You're going to have to go uh, onto the Scrum Alliance site and re, and re, uh, recertify yourself. Uh, they, just like the PMI has the, you have to show education units on the, on the Scrum Alliance side, uh, they're, they're beginning to do that as well. Uh, definitely it's for the CSP, but I'm thinking it's starting to creep into the lower levels as well of certification. And basically all these, any, any courses you take in this space are PDU eligible. So if you have a, P, a, a, a PMP, anything you do in this area would, could be applied to your PMP hours, education hours as well. So, Nate, did you have anything you want to add? And talking about PDUs, the Scrum Alliance uh, has something called the SEUs, or Scrum Educational Units. In case you're at a certified Scrum professional level, um, it, they look for those things. And it's very similar to just either reading a book, going to a conference, um, participating in a perhaps a webinar. So just know, again, the acronym S for Scrum educational units as well. And before we go on, is there any questions? Hey, Bob, this is John C. Let me just uh, share also, I just found out that, that uh, if you have a CSM, you need 20 SEUs, That's, which equivalents to 20 hours of training uh, within the two years. Great. That, thanks, thanks for clarifying that. Yeah. So that I, I renew, when I go to renew, I renew my CSP. Uh, and it, it requires, you know, many more hours than that. But it, yep. I, I noticed that they were starting to really put a focus on that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, good yeah. it's continuous learning, just like PMI thing. Yeah. I think it's a good thing. Uh, and just a little trivia that this new uh, requirement for the CSM to earn 20 SEUs uh, just kicked in on February 9th. So just a couple of weeks ago. Yep. And so I'm yeah, talking getting, about backward how, compatibility. So... Just give me a moment. If you have, let's say, your CSP, Certified Scrum Professional, uh, if you were to renew that, then your earlier certifications are also automatically um, renewed, which would be either your CSM or CSPO as product owner, or both if you have them. Mm -hmm. okay, so question, how, how do you <laughs> get, get your SU, SEUs, right? Because, I mean, with the PMI, I, I know how to get my PDUs. Right, but I don't know how, how I would do it with the CSM. Do you know? Yeah, I mean, not, not to, I, I just looked into it this week. That's why it's kind of fresh in my mind. I would say that uh, not to belabor that discussion in this uh, here, maybe we'll do that for 7 o'clock, but uh, just go to Scrum Alliance. Go to scrumalliance.org, and it'll tell you all the different categories. But it's similar to PMI. I mean, there's hours for, I mean, you can earn SEUs for, for performing training, for watching webinars, and things like that. Let's say you take this, say, you, say you're a CSM, uh, and now you want to take the uh, Certified Product Owner class. Those, that, that would give you 16 SEUs that, that you could apply toward that. So uh, they, they do look, uh, what, what I find is the things I've been using for PMI are being recognized by the Scrum Alliance. Like I did a lot of Agile coaching training uh, that would, these, these courses were not sponsored by the Scrum Alliance. Uh, and they, they recognize that. Uh, I've, they're, they're, they were sponsored by the Agile Coaching Institute. Also, like there's things like the Big Apple Scrum Day. That, that's, you could pick up eight SEUs just by going to that conference in New York City. It's, it's, it's coming up, I believe, in May. Uh, you know, so there, there's definitely opportunities out there. And like John did mention, uh, you can just uh, you know look on the website and they'll 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 point you in the right direction. And 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 you know we're a big family here. If you ever have questions, just reach reach out to Nitin and I. 
we'd be glad to help you as well. Thank All right, you. Nick, you want to, since you're a product owner, want to, you want to go through these? Sure. Uh, my product owner day. So quite similar uh, to your Scrum Master, we did a comparison uh, to CSPO, through Scrum Alliance, CSPO, Level 1, Scrum.org, or Level 2s. So the cost is pretty much the same, uh, about roughly $1,200. There used to be a time you could not take the PSPO online, but they opened it up. Uh, Scrum.org's philosophy is, hey, if you think you know Scrum, uh, Take an exam online, take an assessment, see what's your work, and you'll get your results right away. Uh, for the CSPO, you still have to take a two-day in-person class. Now, the one interesting thing about this, at least so when I took it a couple of years ago, there isn't any exam for the CSPO with Scrum Alliance uh, unless they've changed it. So the idea and philosophy is you go in, you get product owner training, and that's it. You can't really certify for that with an exam. Um, so for some people, that's attractive from a logistical standpoint. They want to just get a certification quickly. Um, that's there. Uh, that's where I feel the PSPO gives a little bit of an edge there because you do have an assessment there. And if you want to go even deeper, you have the level twos. Um, Again, you do have to renew it every year. Again, look at the SEUs through the Scrum Alliance. And if you want to get to the level twos with PSPOs, uh, you just have to complete level ones with an 85% pass, and then you can be eligible for PSPO two. So any questions here? It's very similar in the categories that we compared. And so how many PDUs do you get for the PSPO one? Right, because uh, I see you we, is, is PDU eligible, but with no no crosswork, right? How many uh, PDUs can you claim? The PDUs, I believe, if you take an in-person class, will be about sixteen, and I would just check with Scrum Lines. Uh, if it's just hey, let me go online, take a test, and I'm certified, I don't think you can get any PDUs for that. Uh, but again, I would just check with the certifying bodies because there's so many ways of doing it. Did, did I answer your question? Uh, I guess kind of, right, because right, I was seeing how that applied to the uh, PMI PDUs, because I, I was assuming the PDU eligible meant, meant uh, uh, PMI PDUs. Okay, so let's say you take the PSPO. Yes. Or the CSPO in person. So it's a two-day course. You'll get 16 SCUs and 16 PDUs. And you can also use those uh, as the contact hour requirements towards your ACP. Does that help a little bit? In that okay, so that means that if, if there's no class, then no PDUs, right? Only if you take a class. Correct. That's what I would think so. Okay, thank you. All right. Again, if there's any questions, please please stop us. So so now again, uh, just to remind everybody, um, my name is not Harry. My name is where is that thing? My name is Bob. All right. So this is Bob's journey, and uh, I I started out. I basically I was uh, I, I worked at IBM pretty much my whole life. I grew up to the project and program management ranks. I eventually became an enterprise architect at, at with a project project manager hat on. So because of my technical skills. And after I left IBM, pretty much everybody said, who cares? <laughs> so basically I was in trouble, so I needed to start doing stuff. So uh, the first thing I did was I went for my PMP because I was doing it pretty much all my life. And I also went for my CSM. So those are two things I kind of grabbed like within a couple months of leaving IBM. And uh, it, it, it basically, it's just an initial education. It gets your, it gets your foot in the door. You can start talking the talk and, and start really understanding it. But the way you really learn about this stuff is by doing meetings like this, uh, going to the PMI monthly meetings, talking to people, coming to our LCI meetings. That's how you really learn. You talk to other people doing it. When you're having dinner at the PMI monthly meeting, 
Talk to the people at your table. You find out what they're doing. That's really, that, that to me is the real training. And basically, I decided, this is again, Bob, I said I, enough is enough. I didn't want to even bother with the PSM side. So basically, I, I just, I felt the CSM was enough. And, and right now, uh, if you were to go to go look on job boards, you don't see many PSM requirements, but you do see a lot of CSM. But I will say, I'm starting to see more and more PSM. Uh, you know, they'll say CSM slash PSM now instead of just CSM only. Uh, then pretty much uh, I did was, I, as I started getting better and better and working with teams, I went for my CSP. And I just wanted to do that to demonstrate to my the, per, the company I was working for, which is Teach for America, that, yeah, I, I do know what I'm doing. And that kind of elevated me over all the other Scrum Masters that were in the organization. Like I said, everybody in Teach for America was a CSM, but nobody really was a CSP. So basically, it's something that I personally wanted to do. I wanted to show that I, I had the knowledge. And it, again, this whole thing is a learning journey. Um, so then basically, uh, then, you know, the option would be to go for the PSM 2 or 3. And again, I, I decided to skip that. And then you're going to see that Nitin will differ in this, this part of the journey. But, you know, we'll give Nitin a chance when, uh, when we get to those slides. So, so from there, uh, I, being part of uh, PMI, so I, I guess I was a CSM for about a year. I decided it was time to get my ACP. And so, uh, I was really glad I did it. It, you know, it was nowhere near. If you've taken your PMP, this exam is nowhere near as hard as that. Uh, this this exam is three hours. The PMP is five hours. Just just as as a comparison. But you do need to know your stuff. You need you do need to study. I didn't take any courses. I basically uh, used books that I got. Uh, I I used uh, John Steinbeck's books for PM, PMP PMI ACP exam prep, and I was able to take a lot of online tests. And also, I was really working in this space, so I kind of knew what I was doing, so I wasn't c coming into a cold. Uh, so it, it, that's pretty much what I did. And then from there, uh, everybody's talking about scaling. So uh, I took a course by Craig Larman. He wrote the book on LESS, which, is, which stands for Large Scale Scrum. And I'm at a point in my career where now, whenever I take a class, I make sure it's done by uh, one of the people that wrote the book. Uh, like when I took my coaching classes, I made sure Lisa Atkins was part of it. When I took this less class, I made sure Craig Lauren was teaching it. And it was just an amazing opportunity. Uh, this CLP class is a two-day class, but interestingly, Craig spends the whole first day talking about Scrum. His philosophy is if you don't get Scrum right, what, why would you even scale? So I learned things. I thought I knew what I was doing, but after sitting through his class, I was like, wow, there's so much more that I, that I could know. Uh, then other ones uh, that I've been considering is SAFE. Uh, that's the Scaled Agile Framework. And Nitin will give me a hard time about this because I made the A small, when actually the acronym is all caps and a small e. I made A small because they say it's agile, but if you talk about people in the community, they don't, it's more prescribed, so they don't really feel that it's really being agile. Uh, and then there's this next thing called uh, Scaled Professional Scrum, and that's something that I, is, is something that I, I'd like to be working on next. And then the, I guess the bottom line would be, before you even start thinking about scaling, just work with Scrum teams, just work with Scrum first. Don't, don't worry about scaling until you have to. Anybody in the industry that knows what they're doing, they'll, they'll say that's probably the last thing you want to do is scale uh, because you just want to get these teams working properly. Okay, then basically to continue, I, I then uh, went to a uh, camp in Boston, uh, which was done by the Agile Coaching Institute. And this camp, pretty much changed my whole tra trajectory, changed the way I, I look at things. And these two courses set me up so well that uh, I, I really became grounded and my knowledge was really uh, firmed up. Uh, the first one is Agile Team Facilitator, where basically it teaches you how to facilitate the different Scrum events. Uh, you know, rather than just calling a meeting together, this course actually teaches you how to do it. And then the next, the next course was uh, the professional agile coach. And basically that was my first introduction to coaching. 
because I was pretty much doing that at Teach for America. So we had 15 teams, and I was pretty much looked at as the person that knew what they were doing. Uh, and then finally, just recently, I went for a competency-based certification. Uh, I was very happy that BNY was BNY Mellon was able to sponsor me, where uh, I spent the whole year working with Lisa Atkins and and, and a team, uh, getting trained and getting ready. And this is where you have to actually demonstrate competency in the four areas of coaching. Uh, and there's only two two hundred of us around the world that have the certification. And basically, it focuses on coaching, facilitation, training, and facilitation. And thank you, Nitin. And uh, to me, that this was probably the hardest certification I ever did because I had to video record myself, uh, be willing to take a lot of really constructive and, and hard feedback. You know, when they tell you what, what you did stinks, uh, you know, you have to be able to pick up the pieces and, and, and go forward. So that was pretty much my journey. And so now uh, we're going to let Nitin share his. Thanks, Bob. And again, very, very commendable on the ICE because it isn't a knowledge-based certification or test you can take. They really want to um, test you out, see what you represent, and you have people talking to you, interviewing you in a panel and so on. So we're very fortunate that Bob achieved that. And I think in the state of New Jersey, I only know two people having those credentials. I don't have it. It's just Bob and someone else. Um, so now, my journey. Um, around 2012, I entered a pharmaceutical company as an uncomfortable product owner. I wasn't used to having my requirements being sliced and diced, tossed in the air, and someone saying, yeah, we'll, we'll get to it, you know. And then I saw the magic. I was working with this hyperproductive team that not only said they would do X amount of work, but they took on more. And they delivered on time with zero defects, and they did it every two weeks. It just blew my mind, and that got me curious, and I said, let me just get some more formal training. And we had our scrum master, uh, who was actually not certified, who was moving away from the team. So let me just go get some scrum master training. And I did so with Michael James, who I really appreciate, and he's mentored me um, uh, as well. And he has authored the scrumtrainingseries.com, which is a free animated e-learning module that even my seven-year-old enjoys. Uh, can't thank him enough. And with that, I was really blown away with the content, the material, and what Scrum was about and what I was really missing. That led me to also then take the product owner certification. Um, I, at that time, was working as a product owner, but you know, out of curiosity, I said, let me just take the, the Scrum Master one. But I found value in both. Uh, these are, again, considered intro-level courses. And from that, I said, let me see if there's anything else out there. A bit of a nutcase, so you'll see a lot of acronyms behind me. Don't always follow my path, but I like going to class. I like learning. I like interacting with other people. If there are other certifications out there, I want to go for them if I can. Uh, just increase my knowledge as well. There was a time where the Scrum Guide uh, wasn't fully recognized, and there were different sources of Scrum, uh, till Ken Schwaber and Jeff Sutherland actually uh, said, hey, this is the official Scrum guide. Core Scrum is very lightweight, maybe 16 pages or less. And that's where I got all the other ones. Uh, I used to be a developer earlier on, so I also got a PSD for a developer, and I really enjoyed that as well. That was the intro uh, journey for me. Bob, go on ahead for the next slide. It's right below here. Yep, this is perfect. And then with the advanced certification, uh, as I'd mentioned, I took the certified Scrum professional when it was actually proctored around 2012. And that really covered things beyond just Scrum. So again, in some of the chat, we're having uh, so Neil will talk about the ACP and other things, so Lean, Kanban, XP, and the, the different flavors of agility. Um, I had to learn a little bit more about, do some self-study and reading, and do that. Um, after which, I said, you know, let me go for the, the level twos, and eventually PSM3 came about. I held what was once a professional Scrum expert through the Scrum.org organization, and 
uh, they did away with that and they rolled people into the, the PSM-3. So there's some of us uh, who got to that point that way. Again, these are some of the advanced. If you're looking for some intro levels, the certified scrum master or professional scrum master or the product owner would help. And then you could look at some other things. Next slide. And hey, eventually I picked up uh, my ACP as well. I still remember I was uh, really nervous to uh, got there. Uh, it was proctored. It was a really rigorous, really tough assessment. My application had actually been audited to say, hey, can you show us enough contact hours and enough work experience? Uh, so really, you know, have to, you have to take that seriously, make sure everything's in order. Um, so after having taken so many courses, then I did a little bit of self-study and then I, then I passed. And I was really comparing the ACP to the CSP because I think the CSP at my time had different flavors of agility there as well. All right, next slide. Now, everything today with organizations who have started with some flavor of agility, Scrum being the most popular still, are looking into scaling. That means you have two or more teams you're working at a program or the portfolio level. Uh, I also took a course with Craig Larman in New York in 2014, and I really appreciated uh, what Les had and how it builds things. Um, after that, I also took the first ever course on scaling with scrum.org. That time it wasn't even known as SPS in December 2014. It didn't even have an assessment. I am one of the Nexus Plank owners, as you know. Let's go forth and spread the word and see how it goes. Uh, I actually do not have a certification in SPS because at that time there wasn't one. <laughs> I'm hoping to pick up on it. Um, and then later on, I was curious about the Scaled Agile Framework Program, uh, and I'm also an SBC, um, so I think I have to keep up with some of the credentials there. You had, say, 2.0, 3.0, 4.0. I think they're at about 4.6 as of today. And I took it with Ken France. Now, irrespective of all the scaling, um, I had started working with a multitude of teams around 2012 itself. And there's always a certification you can get, but it's always helpful to get the practical hands-on as well. If you are thinking of scaling, and Bob alluded to some of this earlier, um, try to see what your organization is into or doing. They might already have a flavor of scaling, or they might be growing it organically. So if you haven't touched upon Scrum or some other practices on the onset, then this is kind of far ahead in the periphery. I wouldn't worry too much about this. And then just add the a next TMI slide. Your commercial. Yep, okay. uh, we're offering the SAFE uh, Agilist class uh, in May, and that, that, that actually was just recently announced, and it, we have 38 seats, so if you're interested at all, if your company's doing it, uh, you might want to check that out uh, on the PMI uh, New Jersey website, and uh, Devin, who's on our board, is actually going to be the teacher. Hey, Bob, this is John Seat. I just want to cut into you and just mention that I think you misspoke. It's 28 seats, two eight seats, not 38. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, and if you're an SBC, which I suspect Devin is, you can offer two-day trainings, and the SA is a Safe Agilist. Uh, it's considered an intro-level course as well. Okay, so what next? Um, I got into coaching as well. I started coaching around 2012 with a pharma company, and I was working with a multitude of teams and was doing a dance between mentoring, teaching, facilitating, and true professional coaching, which is still unknown to some people. Um, if you are someone holding the credentials like Bob has at the ACC or ATF, um, then you've really taken a step towards being a great change agent. 
typically you have scrum masters doing this or aspiring coaches, and it really immerses you in the whole dynamic of what it means to be a coach. Now, with Lisa Atkins and Michael Spade, um, the focus was on agile because they're adult coaches. But I also took some other courses with organizations we may not have heard about. So organization and relationship systems coaching or ORS was through a company called CRR Global. And the focus isn't on one-on-one -on -one coaching, but it's rather on a pair, a triad, or a group. And this works really well, let's say if you're a scrum master working with a team, and you're not just coaching one person, you're coaching an entity or a system. Um, and some of the skill sets that I picked up is I've actually coached family situations uh, where let's say there's somebody who's uh, just gotten engaged and is thinking of marriage and two people come together and want to say, hey, but we wonder what that might look for us going ahead. Uh, it could be two people, another couple I had in Switzerland who are saying, hey, we've just met, and for some reason uh, we, we have to separate or park for a little bit of time, and we just want to have a, a sounding year and a listening year and see what that's going to be like. So it's very interesting you get some of these life coaching skills and how they could be weaved into your teams with a lot of heart, a lot of empathy, uh, just to get people working as a unit of one. Uh, CTI is another organization um, long-standing, they have a lot of courses in New York City. Uh, they were the first to be um, certified by the International Coaching Federation. The International Coaching Federation is another organization that is global in nature, but it doesn't have to do anything with Agile. It's really professional coaching and what it means. Um, there is also a, a chapter in New Jersey you could uh, be a part of. So this helps more with people skills this isn't so much knowledge-based training, it's based on something else. Mm -hmm. So with all my journey, I went from some of the knowledge-based to moving into the competency-based. So this has just been my coaching journey. Uh, I've coached people on mm -hmm. team levels and enterprise levels as well. Bob, next. All right, so before we get into that, uh, is there any questions yet so far? Uh, this is Anthony Scarpa. Um, I have a question. It seems like for the scrum.org, uh, you would get your PSM1, and then you'd get your PSM2 and 3. Whereas with the uh, Scrum Alliance, do you have to get your CSM first before you would get your ACSM or your CSP? Yes. You have to, okay. you have to get your A. CSM, you need to demonstrate working as a scrum master for a year. But so you have to, okay, but you have to have that yes, CSM you have to have, you certification. Have to have CSM. Yep. Okay, thank you. Any this other is questions? Henry Will, I had a, this is Henry Will. I had a question about recertification. Uh, you mentioned about recertified if you have your CSM and your ACP. If you're already a PMP, what type of other recertification do you have to do for the ACP? And if you go for your CSM, what type of things do you have to do to get recertified there too? And I guess you said that's in a two-year cycle? Yes. Uh, I, I have a PMP and an ACP, and a lot of, by just going to the PMI New Jersey monthly meetings and going to the May Symposium and the IPM Day, uh, I'm able to meet all the hours for my PMP, and what ends up happening is my ACP gets taken care of automatically. Uh, it's it's pretty cool the way uh, it it works. Uh, you know, like I can get one PDU for my PMP at the same time I'm getting one PDU for my ACP. It's not like one or the other. Uh, so that that's been working out very well, and I've had no problem, uh, you know, meeting those. I'm 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 like years ahead right now with the, my PDUs in the bank. You know. But it, it, it's 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 a nice place to be. I'd I hate to be in, in a catch-up type of mode. Uh, as far as the CSM side, that's a little more complicated because you have to have to have like Scrum training. So what I try to do is I try to go to Big Big, uh, Big Apple Scrum Day uh, because that, that that's an easy way to pick up eight hours. Uh, and if you do that two years in a row, that's 16 hours right there. And then basically just demonstrating any type of agile type of training. 
like I mentioned, that I took co courses from the Agile Coaching Institute uh, for facilitation and coaching, and uh, Scrum Alliance recognized that. There's this whole criteria. They're not quite as sophisticated as PMI, but it's all broken down where basically there's different categories of uh, Scrum education units you can get, and based on uh, like, uh, I believe there's even a category if you read a book or something like that. Again, I never had to go that low because I've always had the courses to fall back on, but it, it's all there. Uh, what I recommend doing is don't wait until your time's up. You know, go go to your Scrum Alliance, go, go to the Scrum Alliance site now, and uh, take a look at your SEUs and start applying for them uh, based on what you've done, and then you'll get a flavor for what you're going to need in, in, when when your certification certification time comes up. And they, they changed all the rules, like John mentioned. Uh, and so what I, my, my certification is up in October. What I, what I did is I rushed to get all my certifications done in January so that I fall under the old rules. Because it's like, I don't, I don't need more work. Uh, so so those are the kinds of things that you, you, have to pay, you have to just be paying attention. And then you can avoid uh, having a lot of extra work that you have to scramble to, you know, to meet those hours. But did I answer your question? Hey Bob, this is John C. Um, I'm 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 not up on my ACP re, uh, continuing certification, but I, I think the difference between the ACP and the PMP is that I think you need specific um, hours of training in Agile for the ACP on on, the, on that talent triangle. I think I think you need a certain number of Agile related technical hours. Is, is that correct? Correct. It's the the hours fall into the same categories. They're the same category, but I think you have to show, I mean, and again, correct me if I'm wrong here. I, I, I think you need you to, agile technical training, though. If you go to the IPM day or you go to the May Symposium, there's agile training that takes place during those meetings. True, so. true. You can get it from those. Correct, correct. But so it has to be it's, agile it's, specific. My lesson, my recommendation, my experience is if you stay active with PMI New Jersey chapter and go to the meeting, and like tonight you're going to pick up one PDU for doing this. Uh, it it happen automatically for you. You'll you'll you'll, get, yep. you'll you'll meet all your PDUs. Correct. But you just have to be you have to do it. it you know, sometimes you're tired, you don't want to go to a meeting, but you just got to get in the car and go. I signed up for the block of meetings basically to force myself yep. because I figured, okay, I already paid for it. You know. Yep. Again, this is just Bob's opinion. Yeah. Did that answer your question? Yeah. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Bob. All right, Thanks. and just just. To just to close this up real quickly, because I want to time box this by seven o'clock. Uh, already talked about this. Go for your CSM or PSM if you're just getting started. Then basically consider moving to a more advanced certification, your ACSM or your CSB, or if you're on the scrum.org side, follow that path. And then basically you also can definitely consider the PMI CP, ACP, because I think it's going to get recognized more and more. Uh, and if you really want to focus your life, you know, that, that, I found my passion. I love this stuff. This is where you want to be. Go, Lisa Atkins. She's like the most wonderful teacher. You want to watch her and see what when she's teaching these classes. These, these uh, I see her a professional in, in facilitation and coaching. Uh, take those classes. It will totally change your whole trajectory. And then basically, before you know it, you'll have that alphabet soup after your name as well. So, uh, <laughs> any, any any final words? And, and so I That's noticed that you. Bob. you that you do not have the the any of the product owner right in the path right and so is that something that we shouldn't consider uh, pursuing uh again this was i it was oversight for me I, I probably should put that in there i i apologize because i i'm more focused on project management and more on the scrum master side and uh, actually i got this by nitton so he, he he let me slip it by him so yes yes uh if you're on the product owner side definitely you know go that way Right, yeah, let's not forget about product owners. So you could go with uh, the CSPO, uh, and then if you wanted, you could do the different levels. But yeah, if you're closer to product management, the business, stakeholders, getting the requirement, getting something out the door, uh, you could start there. Core Scrum is still the same. The rules still apply. It's just the focus. Where are you towards Scrum Mastery or product ownership? So that that concludes our session, uh, and now we're gonna I'm gonna stop the recording, and we, uh, Nathan and I will stay on for another 15 minutes. And just a real quick reminder, we will be getting a survey. Please 